Hello everyone, today in this video we'll be discussing the NoSQL Supreme Point questions and in this uh, question paper I have taken the questions from the August 2022 question paper as well as I have seen the other important questions like based on the previous uh, papers but uh, the NoSQL does not have any previous papers based on the other subjects previous papers what type of questions are mostly asked based on that I have selected the questions and uh, there are totally at least 30 to 35 questions in this um, uh, document and uh, I have, I have uh, put the answers in the uh, explained manner so this is not my elective so i haven't uh, i will not be explaining anything in depth so if you watch this video till the end this will be 70 percent uh, you'll be able to cover the whole syllabus so uh, let's get started before starting make sure you the like button subscribe to the channel forward is like this and let's get started so uh, in the module when the first question is what is no sql no sql means what not only sql sql means what you'll be having a database and you'll be having rows and columns and some rules will be defined so that is one type of data another you can have graph data another you can have the J json data another you can have the object type of data so many types of data are there not only SQL means not only the structured query language, all the types of data can be included. That is called as no SQL. Okay. And briefly explain aggregate data model with an e-diagram. Explain the uh, with the example of relations and aggregates. Okay. Aggregate means what joining. Okay. Keep this thing in mind. This word will be repeated many times in this uh, document. Aggregate means joining. Okay. Aggregate data model. So what do you mean by aggregate data model? In aggregate data model, uh, this is the um, old model in this we have the billing address okay just observe carefully here we have billing address between the address and customer right when we convert this into the aggregate model we will be ha having billing address as the function and the address will be stored here like that type of grouping is called as aggregation okay and relation and aggregation is given here different kinds of data is there and different uh, relation uh, characteristics are there based on that the connections are made here that is only called as relation and aggregation okay so for more information uh, for all all questions you have to go to the theory part okay i'll be just explaining what are the key points here and what you need to keep in mind next we have the question to briefly explain the value of relational databases so relational databases is used in a few concepts like for example getting at persistent data means what data is there that should be persistent it should not be vanished off in case uh, the data loss happens uh, there should be some backup right that is uh, the first value of the relational database second is concurrency whatever the change is happening it should be concurrent everywhere okay integration with the different devices and the different applications are mostly a standard model it's a standard model the relational database the standards define the rules define how to store the data okay Okay, those are the four values of relational models moving on we have the briefly explain the uh, about the impedance mismatch what do you mean by impedance mismatch directly coming to the main point impedance mismatch means the difference between the relational model and the in-memory data structures between the in-memory data and the relational model if there is any mismatch that is called as impedance mismatch okay and with any diagram you have to explain here is a diagram you can go through it okay next we have the short notes on consequences of aggregate orientation what will happen if we do the aggregate orientation at that time what happens any overlapping happens at that time any uh, data is missing at that time inconsistencies happen and one uh, version of data is this one another version of data is this one if you aggregate that the versions will be mismatched okay like those kind of things happen here that all the things which are which can happen are mentioned you can go through it next is key value data model what do you mean by key value data model in key value data model will be having key value pairs there will be a key and attached value to it okay uh, that is what is called the key value model document data model will be having different kinds of da documents like xml csv json and json and uh, object data types like all those uh, kinds of models are called as um, document data models Moving on, we have the column family stores. In the column family stores, you'll be having column key and the column value. Okay, like every column will be having one name that is referred to as column key. For the visual representation, this is called as column key and this is called as column value. And all these things will be stored in a row key. Okay, and it will have two things, profile and orders. Okay, like uh, in this case, the two things are pro profile and orders, so it's there, like the attribute names. Okay. Moving on, we have what is the graph database explained with a neat diagram. Graph database means we'll be having uh, uh, nodes here and those will be connected by using the edges. Basically, that's what the graph database is. And this is an example which is given here. There will be a connections between them. It can be unidirectional, it can be bidirectional, and each of these it will have one functions as well. Like what is the relation between this node and this node? Carol is an employee of Big Co. Okay, like that. So that was about the graph database. Schemaless database means the perfect schema which is defined for every instance that will not be there. You can store any type of database in that okay that is what is called schemaless database it has the advantages and disadvantages as well you can go through it next we have in the module 2 what is distribution model see if you store all the data in one place it will get uh, if it gets lost or everything will be lost distribution means you're storing some some data uh, at some some places okay that is what is called distribution model what are the two parts of distribution model in, in the two parts you have the sharding and the replication 
sharding means just dividing the data and storing in different places replication means storing the same form of data somewhere like a duplicate uh, copy okay those were the two models inside that model also you have like master slave replication peer to peer replication and sharding and replication combination these three concepts are very important okay any of these taken as so sharding is given here this data you uh, transfer here this data you transfer here that is called a sharding master slave replication the same thing is replicated here and here between this master this is slaves and what about peer to peer replication peer to peer means all these three will be having the interconnected data see these two are also sharing the data but in the master slave these two won't be sharing the data okay see here these two won't be sharing the data that's the difference and moving on we have the update consistency and read consistency two types of consistencies which is update and read see i'll explain an example what happens is if two persons are here person a and person b there's one document okay so this person is writing something here and this person is reading something here this person reads the first line and this person edits the first line at that time this person is reading the second line so what happens the edited value is not known to this person right so he has a old information that is not updated one that is called as read write conflict and write write conflict means this person will write something he will erase and write something he will erase that and write something that is called as write write conflict these two types of conflicts are called as update conflict and read consistency to avoid that we'll be using these two concepts update consistency and read consistency update consistency is mainly dealing with the write write conflict and read consistency is dealing with the write uh, read write conflict okay and to uh, handle this you can use the conditional update based on some condition only you will be able to update the data so that the person who is reading that if he is reading you will not be able to update the data that condition we can add there okay and that example also you can give about the two persons same goes for the read consistency as well uh, for the reading you can go for sticky sessions or you can add the version stamps or you can maintain the session consistency okay using uh, sticky session or master slave replication you can store a copy of that somewhere and after that you can edit the copy and finally you can publish the changes like how the github works right so those examples also you can give the about the persons both are valid okay Moving on, we have the two questions, sub question single server and combining sharding and application. Single server means there will be no distribution model, only in single server you will store everything. Sharding and replication combination means there will be different kinds of uh, shardings, master slip sharding and peer to peer sh uh, sharding. The peer to peer is given here, you can go through it. Okay, two types of sharding are there. Moving on, we have the four uh, sub questions relaxing consistency. Relaxing consistency means what? Inconsistency means what? Whatever changes you make here, that should be reflected here. Relaxing that means whatever changes you make here need not be made here. Like that rule is relaxed. Okay. Why this is important? That if you read here, you'll be uh, getting it. That is a trade off. Okay. Means, see, if you uh, focus less on the consistency, you can improve the performance. Right. That uh, resources needed to maintain that consistency will be used for some other purpose. So, in situations where you need not have the consistency, Consistency that much important you can use that resources which are used for the consistency storage for improving the performance like that based on the situations you'll be using relaxing cons uh, consistency and relaxing durability is also the same thing cap theorem is nothing but um, consistency uh, availability and partition these three concepts should be there forums means you will be having some um, concepts here in which uh, if the data um, irrelevancy happens at that time you will be uh, using the quorums in quorums you'll be having a replication factor right quorum and read Quorum. Based on that, you will be um, resolving the consistency. And in the, the main key point here is that you need not uh, contact all the replicants to preserve the strong consistency with the replication. You just need a large enough quorum. If quorum is there, you need not contact all the replicants of the same image. Okay, same uh, data. It was about the quorums. Let's move on. We have the version stamps. Uh, briefly. Uh, explain briefly about the various approaches of the constructing version stamps okay so what is a version stamp once you make a version that stamp is put like what time you have made that version what is the specifications metadata of that version that is called as version stamp okay and what are the ap approaches for constructing uh, version stamps so to construct the version stamp there are many ways uh, you can use a counter you can use a counter this is the first uh, version second version third version fourth version or you can uh, also use multiple nodes you can store the data in multiple nodes like the first version uh, data here 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 everywhere if any one of them gets lost you can take from the other node as well so there are other um, um, ways also like the guid and the key points are given here like uh, it can be implemented using counters it can help you to detect the uh, concurrency conflicts with distributed system a vector of uh, version stamps allows you to detect the different nodes having the conflicting updates okay so these are the key points of this uh, question.
Moving on, we have in the module three the first question, which is the explain the neat diagram partitioning and combining in MapReduce. Okay, so what do you mean by partitioning? Partitioning means you have something you will be partitioning into different pieces and you'll be separating it. Combining means the separated pieces will be combined. Okay, so what happens is sometimes irrelevant data when it is partitioned, the irrelevant data is taken out and all the things uh, rest things will be combined. Basically, this is a two-step process. Okay, so this is the diagram you have to make here. Here two things are there. This is getting partitioned and then it is getting combined in the next place. Okay, then reduced. That's what you have to write here. And moving on, you have the two stage map reduce example. In two stage map reduce, the first thing is you will be uh, broken down into two uh, map reduce steps, which is expanded in the next, the next three figures. This is the uh, map and reduce. Two steps are there map and reduce. Okay. So uh, in the first step, you will be reducing it as follows. And after that, you will be uh, doing the mapping uh, of the operations. And after the mapping of the operations, you will also do the um, creating the base and uh, mapping the final outputs okay here two outputs uh, let's see what i'm trying to say is here see you got the uh, this kind of uh, thing right this one thing like that uh, for many other things this will be generated okay and these things will be combined here uh, into one separate thing like that okay and um, those same things are happening here if you go through it you will be uh, uh, get no actually i don't know actually what actually is happening here so if you uh, read the uh, uh, text given you can go uh, you can uh, get to know that so basically what i understand is uh, there are two processes happening map and reduce so uh, once it is getting mapped and uh, once it is getting mapped and then it is getting reduced that's happening in a two stage process okay this is about the two stage map uh, reduce example another they can ask is the basic map reduce example if they ask about the basic Basic map reduce. That's the next question. Here, what you have to do is you here you will have just one function. Okay. Here you will be mapping it and then uh, directly reducing it. Just one person, uh, one step will be there here. Okay. That's the difference between the previous one and this one. And uh, moving on, we have the composing map reduce calculations. So you can do a few calculations. Like for example, you can do the sum, count, and average by using the concepts of uh, map reduce. Okay. So that's what you have to uh, write and next we have the uh, what are the key value stores list out some popular key value databases explain how all the data stored in a single bucket of the key value data store three questions have been asked what are key value stores a key value store is a simple hash table it's a hash table primarily used for accessing all the database via primary key there will be a primary key using which will be accessing the values that is called as key value store list out some popular key value databases so popular key value data uh, databases are given here like react redis uh, memcache db berkeley amazon dynamo hamster db and so on Okay, these are the some popular you have to list that out and finally they have asked how do you store all the data in one single bucket if you want to store all the data in one single bucket we'll be having bucket here and the key inside that value will be there and for each of these objects or user profile is an object session data is an object shopping cart is an object so for all of these objects you'll be storing different data inside that okay and if you have to compress this one you'll be storing this whole thing as one profile okay user profile object like one id which will be mapping to this one okay this is how you store all the data in one single object okay single bucket moving on to the model 4 we have the what are the document databases explain with example listen and explain two features of the doc document databases here also three uh, three questions are asked document databases with example list the uh, features and explain two features again okay. what are document databases that do a document is nothing but it consists of xml json json and so on okay so these kind of databases are called as document databases and inside that what we have is these kinds of data this is called as json data right so uh, that's what about the json uh, means the document databases and example is also given here you can go through it this is the example and uh, what are the five features consistency transactions availability query features and scaling explain any any two easy ones are consistency and transactions i've included here consistency means whatever the changes happening here it should be reflected back here and transaction means if you want to uh, carry out any transaction how you'll be doing that you'll be writing the atomic transactions and then you'll be uh, doing that atomic means independent if you are performing an operation that should not affect the other uh, transactions happening at the same moment of time and okay, that is called as transaction and the uh, code regarding this is also there as an example it will be covered in the upcoming question okay and so uh the next question is elaborate the suitable use cases of document databases what are the use cases of document databases if you have a document database how you are going to use it and what is the document database when it is not suitable when it is used when it is not used what document database okay so document database can be used in event logging if you have to log in event data content management web analytics or real-time e-commerce application these four are the uh, uses of the um, document database and one place you will not use the document database is where you have the complex transactions and querying against varying aggregate structure if the structure is getting varied again and again at that time you can't use a document database because the, there will be inconsistencies in that right because modification is happening at a higher speed okay 
so that's what about the document uh, databases uses and uh, not uses and the next question we have briefly explained the scaling feature in document database what does scaling mean if you have one box here if you put one teddy bear inside that okay and if you want to put another teddy bear but you have only one box you'll be pushing the teddy bear before one and putting another one okay like that only will be doing scaling the existing database you'll be inserting more and more data and making the load heavy on that okay that's what it is here the idea of scaling is to add nodes or change data storage without simply migrating the database to a bigger box in the same place you are putting more and more thing and doing the heavy load on that see here um we are not talking about making the application to handle more load instead we are interested in what features in the database so it can handle more load what features can be changed so that it can handle more load okay that's what we are uh, seeing here so basic concept we'll be using is the sharding here so in sh by using the sharding you can easily do the following operation okay for more information go to the theory notes Next, we have described some example uh, queries with the document databases. How can you, um, you make use of the document databases queries? So you can use select star from order in the, the equivalent to the MongoDB is DB order dot find. You can use select order from and you can specify a condition where customer ID is this. And you can have the select order, order ID, order from uh, where the customer ID is this. And the same equivalent is also given here. Okay, like that many other things go through it. Okay. That was about the module 4. Let's move on to the module 5. We have what is graph databases explaining the uh, graph structure. Very easy questions. Uh, graph database was also called in the previous uh, module. In graph database, you will have the nodes and the edges, and there will be functions in between them. It can be bidirectional or the directional. This is the diagram here. You can go through it. Okay. So there will be many relations between them, like Martin and Pramod. What is the relation? It is friend and it's bidirectional, and it will be having many connections as well. Okay and uh, no sql distilled uh, it does not means many concepts are there you can go through it for more details and uh, that was about the graph databases next we have the briefly explain the relationships in the graph databases relationship means how two nodes are connected with each other what is the function that is connecting them what is the networking between them okay so if you want to create a relationship at that time you can uh, use the following code node martin is created node pramod is created here two uh, nodes are created and you have to if you have to relate them in between them what you will be doing is martin dot create relation to promote friend and promote dot create relationship to martin friend okay like that if you do they both will be connected by a relationship called as friend then like that you will be doing the relationship thing and you can have the incoming edges and the outgoing edges incoming means the arrow pointing to this node outgoing means from this node okay like that you can have the arrows here right this is the outgoing edge and this is the incoming edge for big four okay that was about the relationships and next we have about the query features and the transactions of the graph database two questions are here what are query features what are the transactions okay in query features we have the different kinds of queries present here so like the index node query and here we have the transaction dot finish query and um, we can get the incoming and outgoing relationships here we have the dot get relationship query dot create relationship query all relationships get single so all those things are called as queries queries nothing but the functions which you are getting okay dot distilled and cipher also provides many uh, queries like for example index name return connected node and match connected node relationship type and so on okay so any of the five you can remember that will be sufficient for you and coming to the transactions if you want to carry out any transaction you'll be doing this following thing transaction transaction is equal to begin transaction and try the following set the property name to no sql and publish it dot transaction success and finally up to transaction dot finish Create the transaction, uh, implement it, and finish it. That are the three components of the transactions. Again, okay. see so this is the example you can write. Next, we have explained scaling and application level sharding of nodes with an e-diagram. Scaling, I will tell you what it is. With the same space, you're uh, making it more uh, contain more data by changing some of its features. And application level sharding means there will be an application level we'll be having two sharding levels here. Means the same data is getting distributed half here and half here. Okay, that is what is in the sharding, right? Application here, North America data is stored, and here, Asia data is stored. Okay, this example you can make, and don't forget to make this graph as well. Okay, moving on to the last question, we have explained some suitable use cases of graph database. What should, uh, where should graph database not be used? Okay, so graph database can be used when the data is connected, routing, dispatch, and local based services, and you can use in the recommendation engine. And when not to use, you cannot use the database when you have a complex query situations or the data model changes the relationship again and again. See, two nodes are there connected with each other and if those two relation is changing again and again it will be very hard to break this uh, link and change the link again in that case you cannot use the graph database that's all make sure you know all these questions very well very important questions make sure you the like button subscribe and channel for more just like this and thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one